Whoa, what's up you fellas? Has here? What are we talking about today? Bro, I want to talk to you fellas about a little game that I reckon's underrated, eh? Lords of the Fallen, bro! I bet you fellas haven't even heard of it, eh? Or maybe you have, but you had your heads buried in Dark Souls, eh? So you didn't give it a shot, man. Dark Souls is a great game, man. Hey, if you like. Oh, how's it, egghead? For once, old Haz agrees with you, man. Dark Souls is a good game. Can I just finish what I was saying? So you fellas, let's talk about Lords of the Fallen. Just two seconds. I, I think we should... You, I, I'm, man, I mean you should review Dark Souls. Whoa, you're coming up with some decent ideas for once, man. Maybe you aren't the egghead I thought you were. But if you just try to speak normally... Bro, do you want to smack that egghead, man? He never lets up, eh? Alright, you fellas, let's get into it. First of all, I'm just going to say it straight off the bat. The moment old Haz started playing this game, it only took a couple of minutes to put my controller down and then say to myself, Bro... This is just a western version of Dark Souls, man. To say that this game isn't inspired by Dark Souls would be straight up lies, bro. So if yous are used to playing the Souls games, then you'll probably either react in one of two ways if you play Lords of the Fallen. You'll either like it, eh? Because it's more Souls-like content and you'll be really happy with it. Or you will hate it because it's not as good as Dark Souls in the areas that make Souls games stand out, man. I hope to convince you fellas to give it a shot, eh? because it's actually pretty good if you're willing to see past those issues. Lords of the Fallen was developed by Deck 13 Interactive and CI Games and was released in late 2014. It's out for PS4, Xbox One and PC and it's more of an action adventure with some RPG elements than a straight up RPG. But all has will just let it be in his presence for this one time eh? Never really heard of either of these developers before playing this game eh? I'm really surprised man because it looks for not for not Bro, it looks wicked as he. At the time of its release, it looks way better than any of those Souls games, bro. So let's start with the graphics, eh? The style of the characters, armor, weapons, and creatures was all top notch. It's as if Darksiders and Bloodborne had a baby, man. The environments and the effects look awesome too, bro. But the most outstanding area for me was the armor sets, eh? Every time I got a new piece, I didn't even care if the stats sucked, man. I had to try it on to see what it looked like. Old has never does that in any game. So I need you fellas to realize that I was blown away enough to ignore my stats, eh? And just equip something for the looks. Ten minutes into the game, I was shown an epic cutscene with this wicked heavy ass looking demon lord fella with this giant sword. And then I was like, bro. Do you want to fight me? He looks so massive and powerful, eh? I was kind of scared. But then he attacked me with this move, man! Deck 13, you better explain this to old Haz right now. What is it? Hurry up, I'm waiting. Bro, it's like he's doing ballet. I think you mean ballet. Oh, come on. There's a T in there, man. It's ballet. I can help you learn to speak. I'm going to smack you right now. I'm serious as man, that one animation totally ruined the immersion that it built up. Here was this heavy ass powerful and mighty demon lord fella eh? And then that? From Software would never make a mistake like this eh? Look at it! One more time! Oh, deck 13 bro. Luckily that was the only time in this whole game that old Haz was so shook eh? Beyond this, I can confidently say that the boss fights contain no more ridiculous animations and combat with standard enemies was engaging enough to keep me plowing on and gathering more souls. Uh, oh, blood echo, eh? Experience points. Oh, so westernized, bro. EXP points, eh? Let me prove to you fellas how addicted I was, eh? Here's that platinum trophy, man. Let's talk about the gameplay, eh? You play Lords of the Fallen as this massive bulky fella named Harkin who was in jail for something, eh? Oh, I bet he burgled some fella, eh? Or maybe pinched his car. Oh, but there's no Lamborghinis in that world, eh? By the looks of it. Anyway, you play as Harkin. And straight away, you can choose between three magic types. Brawling, Soulless, or Deception. Followed by your starting gear, which is basically your class. Rogue, Warrior, and Cleric. Man, you can mix and match the class and magic for some pretty crazy combinations, eh? Or my favorite, a warrior with deception magic. Whoa, mimic spell plus two-handed greatsword for the win, you follows. Seriously, watch the enemies and bosses melt before your power once you are strong enough to cast that on a regular basis. 
Lords of the Fallen plays just like a Souls game. It's a linear path through some pretty amazing looking environments, eh? With save points placed at just the right spots to make them feel like you've accomplished something on the way to the next one. Bro, some smart ass fellas designed these levels, eh? Because as you progress, you will unlock previously locked doors or drop down to paths that open up to places that have already been explored. And that creates some wicked shortcuts, man. Combat in Lords of the Fallen is also like a Souls game. You have health, magic, and energy bars on the UI. Energy is used up every time you take a swing with your weapon or make an evasive roll. You are governed by weight and the heavier you are armoured the more energy is used on all of your actions. This creates that familiar energy management type battle system that's made famous by those Souls games. You've got heavy and light attacks for each weapon type eh? And you can chain those attacks together for different movesets. The results can vary a huge amount from weapon to weapon and they all feel so different from one another in rhythm and timing. You can also take a weapon that's supposed to be one handed and wield it with two hands which makes all your attacks stronger. There is also a projectile weapon called a gauntlet that you'll pick up at some point and also there are shields in this game too. There are governing stats for your chosen class A that determines your weapon's effectiveness. For rogues it's agility, for clerics it's faith and for warriors it's strength. Agility based weapons include claws, daggers and jewel swords and focus on rapid attacks. Faith weapons are typically staffs, wands, hammers and great hammers, many of which do some form of magical or elemental as well as raw physical damage. They are also slower than agility weapons and use more energy per swing. Strength weapons are the big daddies man, swords, great swords, great axes and shields. These are almost all exclusively massive raw damage dealing weapons eh? They use the most energy and they are the slowest by far but they deal insane levels of jam- ja Jamage? Jamage? What the he What? Harkin will also have 4 spells depending on what you picked at the start for your magic choice but honestly I found these to be basically little perks rather than magic in the sense that we all know it or are used to some of them do allow for some interesting combat mechanics though. There's a spell called prayer which creates a decoy and it confuses the enemies and bosses alike. There's also a spell called mimic, I mentioned it earlier. It basically creates a duplicate copy of you that follows your every move. Bro, that means you can double your damage output for a short time. Every enemy you defeat gets you some exp. And every other enemy you defeat after that one increases this multiplier which will get you more EXP. So the more enemies you fight, the more EXP you will get. This only resets if you die or when you choose to level up. So that creates a bit of a risk reward mechanic right there eh? I often found myself going, can I fight on? Do I need to bank my EXP and level up? Or should I just carry on and get more? Leveling up is easy as man. You use that banked experience to either raise your stats or level up your spells. Just a heads up eh from old Haz, once you hit 50 in any of your stats the bonuses drop right off eh. May as well start putting it in the others instead. At a certain point of the game you will meet this fella that can enchant your weapons eh. Harkin will find sealed runes by opening chests and from enemy loot drops. And this fella will polish them for you. He unseals those runes and that reveals the true rune that lies underneath. There are sizes and rarities that give higher bonuses and so forth. It's all totally random though eh so this can be crazy addictive man watch out. Old Haz went for a deception based warrior for my build eh. So I was grinding for flawless luck runes for hours man. But once I stuck them on my two handed greatsword bro. Woo! It pretty much turned me into a killing machine, eh? On new game plus 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 I murdered all of the bosses on the hardest difficulty with ease using this combo, eh? Oh, except for the very final boss. Bro, it was just stupidly difficult, man. Deck 13 just cranked up his damage output and healing capabilities so high that one single mistake in a 10 to 15 minute battle was enough to lose everything man. If my casting of Mimic wasn't perfectly timed my massive damage output could easily be negated by his insane regen abilities. Ultimately enemy management and boss battle mechanics are really what Souls games are all about 
and Lords of the Fallen actually does a pretty good job on the enemy front, but boss battles? Bro, I'm sorry to say, that's where it falls flat, eh? The designs of the bosses are really cool, man. They look good, they sound good, it's all good, that stuff. But the mechanics of the fight, bro, they're just way too simple to master, man. Like, you won't even be hit once kind of simple. I also wish there was way more bosses, eh? This is the biggest letdown of the whole game for me. And if this one thing was better, I reckon we would be talking about a game that scored up in the 8 to 8.5 range, eh? Let's talk about the story, eh? It's a pretty basic plot with a few key characters. Let me break it down for you fellas. These things called Rogar have been showing up, invading, and causing problems in the human realm, eh? And this geezer named Kazlo frees Harkin from a prison cell to help stop the invading forces. There are a few other characters to meet along the way towards your goal of defeating the Rogar lords, and there's a nice little plot twist in there, but I'll let you fellas figure that one out, eh? It's a pretty short and simple storyline that is dished out at a good enough pace that it kept old hairs interested. It is told to you simply via cutscenes and by these little scrolls which you can pick up. They are read out aloud while you continue to explore. Kind of like Diablo 3. Let's quickly go over the sound. Bro, the sound in Lords of the Fallen is insane. It's wicked, bro. Ground shaking bass. Harsh metallic scrapes. And heavy weapons clashing with meaty flesh. Steel on steel, bro, it's all done so, so well. Even the demonic languages spoken by the Rogar sound filthy and dirty. The music is atmospheric, but not intrusive, and the dialogue and voice acting for all the characters is just so good, bro. He will have no choice but to enter the fight himself. If you have some sweet ass headphones or a wicked sound system plugged in, man, crank it up, you will not be disappointed. There are some problems with the game though. Frame rate issues sometimes popped up making it almost unplayable. This seemed completely random also, which made me think there's some kind of memory leak issue somewhere. Bro, the game straight up blue screened me a couple of times when I was playing as well. Also, the sound would bug out at some point after playing for a couple of hours. This happened about 4-5 to five times during my playthrough way. It's annoying as bro because the voice sound effects and environment effects all disappear leaving only the music playing and the only way to fix that is to close the game completely and start all over again bro that's terrible for trying to increase that exp multiplier i really wish this game had more bosses more creature and rogar variations and that the combat mechanics for the boss fights was turned up a little higher because that's really all that's missing from an otherwise very solid game eh? Having said that, there is a DLC which Old has played and beat. It has new enemies and new weapons, armor and a ton of loot. It's basically this giant puzzle level A that took about a day for me to beat. I actually really enjoyed it man because the puzzle was quite hard eh? It's like the whole floor was a Rubik's Cube man. It also ended up in a pretty rad boss fight man. I won't spoil it for you fellas, just check it out. All in all, I think this is a really, really good game, eh? It's a solid, Souls-like game that should keep you fellas happy. It will take about 20 hours to beat, and maybe about another 10 to 15 hours if you want to get the Platinum. There's also that DLC, eh? So don't forget about that. So I give this game a total score of 7 ballets out of 10. Hey, you fellas, don't forget to click on that like and subscribe button and ding -a -ling that bell, eh? I'm gonna go get a drink while you fellas do that. Are you done yet? See you fellas on the next one.